all right. So you saw me build the rover. You saw me improve the rover with hinges and mining attachments. And I still had a couple tweaks left to do on my little rock truck to make it work the way I wanted. And I'll show you that. But in the end, I wound up scrapping my beautiful little invention and going all large grid. And let me tell you something, people. It was the best decision I've made so far in the game. So the issue I had with my rock truck is that I had to maneuver the vehicle around any time I wanted to mine a little bit to either side of the drill. This wasn't terrible, but it was a little troublesome. And there was some things I wanted to try to do, like excavate a kind of downward ramp to be able to get to some of the underground deposits that I wouldn't be able to do unless I made my drill path wider and drive my rover down the width of an excavated ramp without having to wiggle it side to side. I knew that wouldn't work. My solution was to put, you guessed it, another hinge. Now, I know I'm completely infatuated with the hinge, and I think it's because in this Space Engineers game, it's one of the pieces that allows true mechanicals to take place. Beyond just stacking blocks together and building things, it's one of the things that allows moving parts, and I'm finding it to be really fun and a distinctive part of this game. I guess that's why they call it Space Engineers rather than just Space Builders. So a third hinge was added to what was already two hinges, but it allowed the mining arm to swing from side to side and excavate that wider path I wanted. Not only did it allow me a better way to mine boulders and get up against cliffs, but it did let me start this downward ramp idea I had. One thing that I didn't think would be a problem, but it turned out to be pretty major, was that I kept getting stuck down in my ramp due to rather uneven terrain, I think. The rover had shown to have a lot of power and traction, so I didn't think it was gonna be a problem, but it was. So perhaps foolishly, I added a couple small atmospheric thrusters to the rover to help me push it out of any really bad situations. I had no idea what was gonna happen. For all I knew, it was just gonna launch my rover into the air jettisoning it out of the ramp and leaving it splattered in bits 100 yards away. But the thrusters actually worked pretty well, and it did help push me out of a couple bad situations in my little ramp experiment. But the pivoting drill and rocket launcher additions turned out to be the last upgrades this little small grid rock truck was gonna see. In a careless moment, I went too fast down an incline hit a rut, and hopelessly flipped the rock truck over on its back. Yes, again. But this unfortunate accident led to a series of events that turned out to be one of the best things that I had done in the game. To rescue my little rock truck, I decided to build another rover that would be capable of flipping it over. I also realized that for it to have enough power and leverage to do that without getting stuck or into trouble itself, it would need to be big. So my first large grid vehicle was a go. Now when I say large grid, I had no idea how large large grid really was. One wheel of its suspension was wider than my entire little rock truck. I had to start building a much bigger platform for the assembly before even starting. But here's where things got really cool. It had two batteries, like the prior vehicle, but these were much larger with a much higher capacity. It also had three cargo containers, like the last one, but these held several times as much as the small grid containers I had on the other truck. Even though I was building this to rescue the original rock truck, in the back of my mind, I couldn't help but feel as though this was gonna be my next evolution in mining. But for now, a simple flipper mechanism on the back of the rover, I figured would be enough to turn over the little rock truck and at least allow me to have a spectacular rescue. Right away, on my way to the rescue, I could tell this new rover was absolutely amazing. It had a super wide footprint with the two large wheels and an extremely low center of gravity. It handled like a dream. 
The only thing it didn't do well was actually flip over the rock truck. The little truck kept sliding off the rover's inclined flipper arm. And when I finally succeeded in seeming to get it flipped upright, the carnage and inhumanity of watching the little rock truck get mauled and seeing little bits of it getting crunched off under the wheels and chassis of the big rover was incredibly heartbreaking. But at the same time, I was laughing so hard my sides were hurting. And it's really times like this that can either make the game super frustrating or really fun. It just depends on whether you take each event as a failure or as a next step at some sort of challenge or learning. Personally, oh I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> and despite losing about 30% of the little rock truck to the munching wheels of the big rover, it was upright. But I gotta tell you, fate just didn't have a future for the little rock truck. It was now unbalanced, and in some sort of foggy sandstorm, I wrecked it again, trying to get it back home. So at that point, the little rock truck was done, and I was going to move on to the big rover and get it tweaked out for mining. In the process, I was able to vastly improve and simplify the overall functionality of the new big rover drill setup. By using a 90 degree conveyor tube and just two hinges, I could get plenty of side to side as well as up and down drill movement and be able to nicely fold up the drill on top of the rover like I had my prior rig. I was able to set up a similar extension arm and use the hinge as a recharging port and overall ended up with a vastly superior mining vehicle than what I had before. I didn't even bother with adding any solar panels because the two large grid batteries would supply enough power on this rig to run it for days if necessary. And I couldn't really see a situation where it would need to be recharged to get it back home. I had even seemed to resolve my whole flipping issue with this new truck. Not only did it have tremendous stability from the wide stance, but in examining the overall height to the vehicle's body, it looked as though even if it flipped over, all it would take is a little adjustment in the height of the suspension and I could theoretically still drive this truck if it was upside down. There wouldn't be a lot of clearance, but might be able to squeeze out a third of a block, enough to get it back home if I was careful. Another feature this new rover also had was incredibly high ground clearance. I could just drive up to something like one of these satellites and straddle the whole thing for easy grinding and storage of the material. It made me think that maybe in the future I could add some sort of grinder assembly where I wouldn't even have to get out of the truck. Also, what this new rig needed was a really nice paint scheme which is where I picked up some tips I want to share. You can press P and open the paint options, and any block you place after you've selected the paint will color that block and apply whatever texture you also selected. What I had a little trouble with was figuring out how to paint a block that was already assembled, particularly in survival mode, but here's how to do it. You still press P and go to the paint to select whatever you want. You then select a building block, like a light armor block. And with that selected in your hand, hold it up next to the existing block you want to color, as if you were going to attach it. Then press the middle mouse button. It'll apply the paint to the existing block. Now you can also paint larger areas if you want by pressing control and the middle mouse button or shift and the middle mouse button. Control will paint a surrounding 3x3x3 volume of blocks, and Shift will paint a larger 5x5x5 volume. This may not always paint things how you want, but it does work if you just want to paint on mass quantities of blocks. There's also a Paint Copy feature I found super useful. Once you get a color and texture of a block you really like, you can hold a block in your hand as if you were going to apply the paint and hit Shift P. This will copy the paint scheme of what you're looking at and then allow you to reapply that wherever you want. 
which led to my first very cool looking vehicle, which I nicknamed Yellow Jacket. But my large grid aspirations were not over. I now had the bright idea to build my first ship, a large grid ship, and make it capable of loading and carrying the new big rover, and use it for a host of other mobile base functions. But that is the subject of my next Space Engineers video, and you don't want to miss the monstrosity of a ship I came up with. Till then, take care, and don't forget to like and subscribe, because I might have created the ugliest ship in all of Space Engineers.